helping you turn your house into your dream home. This is the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, presented by Benjamin Moore on News Radio Wood 1300 and 1069 FM. Well, Betsy, I've got to say, I'm very excited about an upcoming segment, our fourth segment, The Walls of Death. I am very excited. (laughs) It's a history segment. It is. It's very different, and people are going to be really wondering about this one. Absolutely. It's very interesting, very intriguing, and a little bit of a head scratcher, I have to say. I was a little surprised by it. (laughs) You're going to wonder what in the world they were doing that? Yes, that's exactly what I thought. Let's not say anymore because it's too cool. So that's the fourth segment today, so you have to stay tuned for that. We're also going to be giving away that $50 gift certificate that we talked about on our last episode when we answered one of the absolutely fantastic questions that we received on Facebook over the past week. It's one I'm really excited about. That's all ahead. But first, we're in the middle of a conversation with Bob Snowden from Snowden Builders. And Bob, I just want to get back to your point that you made at the end of the last segment or during the last segment about how important communication is in, in a project like this. Now, I understand everything you were talking about, how it's important to keep the lines of communication open to make our builder aware of what we're thinking and all of that. That makes sense. Right. But the the deal is there are some extremes to this communication. You know, there are really two sides. One side is very pushy and absolutely obnoxious, and they ask way, way, way too many questions. And the other side is they don't ask questions at all. They just sit there. And, you know, we don't want to be too pushy or too silent and not ask enough questions. What are your suggestions for walking that very fine line between the two? At what point are we asking too many questions of our builder? Well, for one thing, I I would much rather deal with somebody who asks too many questions than somebody that doesn't ask enough because I'm I'm trying to understand what it is you want. Mm -hmm. And there occasionally I deal with people who just are not very good communicators. Uh, And I want to know where you're coming from because it's it's going to cost both of us time and money if there is miscommunication or misunderstanding. So I like it. I can't say it doesn't get on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> right. when well. People sit there and ask you all these questions because it does. Um, but at least I know where you're coming from. But there are people, and that is just their personality. They're not real good communicators, and they don't want to talk about it. Well, and I, I really don't know. They're, you're leaving it up to me mm-hmm. to do my best at understanding what it is you're talking about or what you want. Some of it is because we're afraid to be obnoxious. You know, you don't ask too many questions at the restaurant because eventually somebody spits in your food. <laughs> right? That's how it works. At least that's the... You ask too many questions and your builder walks away yeah, and you're... You're stuck with half a house. Well, I think a bigger reason is people don't understand what it is they're talking about. They understand what they want to get Mm -hmm. out of a project, but they're afraid of sounding stupid Stupid. or they don't really know how to ask the question. And I really don't care because we'll get through it. Mm -hmm. But it usually starts out with that awkwardness and they don't know what they're talking about. That's, (laughs) That's fine. I get that. Um, but I would rather go through that awkwardness and get to, you know, what it is you want or don't want. Now, that's something for all of us to take into consideration, no matter who we're hiring, you know, no matter what kind of contractor we're bringing into our homes to do whatever kind of work, whether they're mm-hmm. doing our yard or whether they're helping us fix a kitchen or roofing or whatever, if you have confusion or concerns, voice them to your contractor and a good contractor is going to work with you through that. Well, and usually I will try and read the person up front and see how, or uh, flat out ask them, how do you like to communicate? Do you like texting? Do you like emails? Mm -hmm. Do you want a phone call? Do you want to meet on the job site? And I will adjust to however they like to communicate, but we must communicate on a regular basis And a lot of times I will just send somebody an email or a text and say, you know, how's it going? Do you have any questions, concerns? And all of a sudden, then they'll come out with it. And it's Mm -hmm. like, well, geez, had I not asked, you wouldn't have told me that and I wouldn't have known. 
So I can see that that's important, but I can also see that that's probably a bit of a juggling act for you because I'm sure that all of that communication, you're trying to keep that open, but I'm not the only client you're working with. I might mm-hmm. have 10 different jobs going and I have 10 different people uh, that I'm trying to communicate with on a regular basis. But if it gets to the point where as a builder, if you can't do that, then hire people. Right. And I do that. Uh, I have my daughter that works for me full time and she is more of the communicator. Uh, so it, it just however you do it, make sure you're talking to these people well, that's constantly. good input for everybody, whether you're a contractor listening, because we have plenty of contractors mm-hmm. listening as well. It's a great business model. Just make sure the communication is happening. Now, we're talking with Bob Snowden from Snowden Builders on the Repco Light Home Improvement Show. And the next thing I guess I want to talk about before we wrap this all up is just your unique approach to building. You know, that was one of the things when we stopped by – we sat in your parking lot and we Googled you. <laughs> we found your website. And, I did not know that. <laughs> and we're just reading about, you know. We are just, not stalkers, by the way. No, no, that's, stalkers, that's fine if you are. We're just good stalkers. <laughs> right. But anyway, we found that you adopted what you called on your website a woman centered approach to building a house. And I guess I'd like you to just focus on that for a little bit here. Well, uh, I would say I really don't know the answer to this, why. Uh, But it seems like lately I am talking to the women, I would say 80 to 90 percent of the jobs. Mm -hmm. The women seem to be the communicators Mm -hmm. in the job, uh, which is fine with me. I'd really usually at the beginning of a job, one will stand out as the communicator. And usually I'll pick up on that. And Mm -hmm. that's the person that I just wind up talking to. It seems like in the past it was more traditionally the guys. Mm -hmm. And now it seems more like it's the women for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, But that's fine. But I think traditionally also that builders tended to gear their conversations toward the guy, and Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the best way to offend a woman (laughs) is to focus more on the guy. And Mm -hmm. the woman is, or women in general, are usually the driving force in purchasing a home, building a home, Mm -hmm. or remodeling a home. Even decorating, painting. We see that in the store at Repcolite all the time. Yeah, You know, they drive what's going on. That's Who's making the decisions in that regard? Well, it makes more sense to me to focus more Mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. And I do. And I, it's not that I don't listen to the guy, I do. uh, But I kind of already get what the guy is looking for. Mm -hmm. I want to know what it is, how that woman is thinking, what it is she wants out of it. That's important to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's going to be, you know, whether or not the job is a success or not, as whether or not she. She's happy. And from my perspective, she's more likely to go on the Internet. Mm -hmm. The guys don't typically do that. A woman will. And some of my best references are women that I have built homes for or done remodeling jobs. Uh, they love to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So Well, it's a great approach. I like what you're doing there, and I, it makes so much sense because, like I said, we see that at the store all the time. We can talk to guys all we want about colors and what's happening and what's happening in their, their homes. Their eyes and, glaze and, Yeah, over. you just see that glazed <laughs> look on their face. <laughs> they see yep. the vision. You know, the guy will get it when it's done. He'll understand oh, the vision. Oh, she was right. Yeah, we're not dumb. We just, <laughs> you know, we're happy where we're at. They're always looking ahead. Yeah. Bob, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, if they've got more questions about some of this stuff, or if they'd like to contact you and kind of see once what you might be able to help them accomplish in their homes or in a new home, how do they best do that? I would be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, you can contact me by email at bob at snowdenbuilders.com. You can go to my website. Uh, snowdenbuilders.com mm-hmm. or you can call me at 616-299-8455 excellent snowdenbuilders.com bob thanks for being here thank you now when we come back we're going to give away some money Woo-hoo! who doesn't like that everybody loves that. everybody loves that and somebody in particular is going to love it even more yes to find out who stay tuned 